call people in the public? Yes? Okay. All right, welcome everyone. We'll call the regular session of the Town of Town Council to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Please remain standing for our invocation tonight. Thank you. This is um, Ms. Michelle Hasley from uh, North, Chapel. North Chapel. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being here tonight. Yeah. Thank you for being here tonight. Yeah. Our gracious Lord, we thank you for our wonderful town of Fountain Hill that you have brought us to, and for the group of servants who bear this government making decisions that would please you and benefit those that reside here. We are grateful for this meeting tonight and the dedication of our council members. We pray that they would learn, grow, and govern together in a just and honest way that would benefit and be a blessing to you in our community. We are grateful for your provision and ask that you would bless the team with your presence that you might reign in the rule over all who gather here that they would be blessed with the wisdom and discernment while you protect them from any chaos or disharmony, that they would instead be filled with your understanding and forgiving presence, guiding and nurturing all of us on your path that furthers your plan for our lives, this town, and your kingdom. With grateful hearts, Lord, we honor and adore you. In Jesus Christ's most holy name, amen. amen. Thank you, Ms. Hadley. Amen. Michelle is the Director of Care Ministries at North Chapel Community Bible Church right here in Fountain Hill. So thank you very much. Roll call, please. Mayor Schlum? Here. Vice Mayor Dickey? Here. Council Member Contino? Here. Council Member Lachey? Here. Council Member Elke? Here. Council Member Brown? Here. Council Member Hansen is absent. All right, thanks. Before we get started, I want to mention that it's poppy season. The poppies are growing and sprouting from our VFW. So if you want, uh, grab a poppy for a dollar and the proceeds uh, support the Veterans Assistance Program. So I got poppied, and uh, you get poppied too. Uh, this is this time of year. Um, I have a little treat. If you could uh, pass that down to Council Member Contino. You can open that up. It's no surprise. It's just chocolate from our chocolate bin. Take one, open it up, pass, take your pick a flavor, either a dark chocolate or a white chocolate and pass it down and uh, just to share a little treat with our council and uh, council member Contino, it is not laced with anything but calories. Well, and, well would you like mine? <laughs> okay. We'll share their balance. So. I'll put it back for you. But uh, take one. And this is just to uh, share my just a little sign of appreciation for an awesome town council and Thank you all for your service uh, here at our wonderful town. And um, <laughs> and that is all I have for the mayor's report. Now we move on to the scheduled public appearances. We've got a, we're got we fortunate to have Honorary Council of El Salvador, former council member Enrique Melendez. And we have some visitors I'll let Rick introduce. And um, he's going to talk about the Sister Cities program. And then I'll share some news as well. Welcome. Mr. Melendez, thanks for being here. Thank you, Mayor Trump, Vice Mayor Dickey, Council members, and staff. Uh, before I begin my formal comments, I'd like to have some personal comments as a former council member and as a resident. And uh, they're directed towards you, uh, Council Member Leger. I want to congratulate you on a convincing victory. Uh, I know it has put a lot of pain into your life and to your wife and kids, I applaud you for standing up and doing the right thing for yourself, for the council, and for the community. Secondly, Council Member Brown, congratulations on your victory, and I wish you the very best. Two weeks ago, I was in town hall giving some paperwork to my favorite lady, Beth Bender, and uh, a gentleman approached me by the name of Jeff Cohen. I never met him before. And he said to me, council member, and I said, yes. He uttered five words, thanks for your service. 
and that applies to all of you tonight, in my opinion, and particularly to Council Member Contino, who will be leading the Council. I want to commend you on the work you've done and you've had the support of the community. I'd like to always thank God for providing me with good health and energy to continue the things I do for my native country and for bringing into my life 30 years ago a wonderful lady, a guardian angel, my beautiful wife Pam, that without her support I wouldn't be here today. And uh, last, uh, Mr. Buchanan, I just met you this evening. Uh, welcome to Fountain Hills. I hope you have purchased some Kettler uh, stock. And uh, I wish you the very best in your effort to be the town manager. I would ask that you try to achieve the same level of excellence that Paul Norton had when he was our town manager, my good friend, who I considered the best town manager in the state of Arizona. Now, Mayor, uh, about two months ago, the foreign ministry asked me to set time aside with, uh, with the council so we could honor you and, and uh, for the service you've given uh, the community and also because of what you've done for the uh, sister city program, Germany and El Salvador. So we have a program here today that will be fun. It's meant to be fun and not serious. And uh, we have some guests that I'd like to introduce. First of all, uh, Oh, That's it. That's it. <laughs> That'll get me in the mood. First of all, I have. A, I want you to know when I come before a council, Mr. Buchanan, I come with strength. I have three former mayors with me here. First of all, Mayor Waldy Nichols, Mayor Sharon Morgan, Mayor Wal uh, <laughs> Miles, and my good friend, the Honorary Council of Poland, Nick Horcham, and his wife, Elizabeth. You know, the, uh, when the, the General Counsel of El Salvador couldn't be here today to present uh, the plaques that I'm going to offer to you, I asked these gentlemen the lady to be with me because they're a very important part of what happened many years ago between El Salvador and, and uh, Fountain Hills. It really started uh, six years ago when a group of people, six of them actually was uh, Mayor Nichols, Mayor Morgan, Superintendent of Schools, Mayor and Hermie, and Frank Ferrara was sitting behind me, uh, the President of the Chamber of Commerce. These people went to four different cities before they selected a taco, and I was just an innocent observer, although I had my own wishes that they would select that city. It's a beautiful city up in the mountainside where the best coffee in the world is grown, in my opinion. Before I get to that, uh, I want to go back to a gentleman who's my guest tonight, and he is uh, the Honorable uh, Con uh, Consul of the Republic of Poland. Uh, last month, I was privileged to attend a, an accreditation ceremony where we had the Ambassador of Poland, His Excellency Robert Czupecki, officiate at this function. I've never seen the representative John Cavanaugh looked up to anybody, but that night he looked up to the center of the Phoenix Suns by the name of Martin Gortat. I hope I pronounced it right. Anyway, the accreditation ceremony to me was a tribute uh, to Poland, uh, another sister city, another possible sister city in the future. Mr. Horsham was uh, honored by over 110 people at that function and he became a member of the Council of Corps of Arizona last month. And speaking about the Council of Corps of Arizona, I'd like to give and recognize Congressman Ben Quayle because he had the courtesy and the instincts to send a senior staff member to that ceremony, and we appreciate that. I'm speaking on behalf of the Council of Corps of Arizona and 140,000 Polish people that live in Arizona. The trip that suggested we select the taco was full of emotion, full of heart, and in my opinion, we did the right thing in selecting that city. Mayor Miles, who's with me and behind me, has had five visits to El Salvador. Five. Six, he says. I think that the country is going to make him an honorary citizen. But he and his wife, Jackie, have been there 
fought again five, six times. He was given the honor of representing the country of El Salvador with his photography, and uh, he has done marvelous work with it, and it is being shown in all the embassies all over the world for the country of El Salvador. Mayor Nichols. Mayor Nichols was one of the first members to visit uh, the country, and during that time, nope. Okay, I'm trying to go back here. Thank you. <laughs> coming to save you. Here we have Mayor Nichols with President Saka, Antonio Saka. This was way, way back, about five years ago, Wally, I think it was. And uh, he brought uh, to the president, presidential palace, a beautiful picture of Fountain Hills in the fountain. And I'm going to be in El Salvador next week. Mayor, I want to make sure that the picture is still hanging in the palace. I have a surprise for you, Mr. Mayor. This is a picture of you. And the president for your records and for your rooms. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cool. <laughs> Mayor Nichols again has been down there many times, and his son, Dr. J. Nichols, who's a renowned oceanographer, was very helpful in launching the turtle program in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of El Salvador. He's been many times, he and his wife, Sheila, have been dedicated to, to the Sister City program. Finally, Mayor Morgan, a friend who is the heart and soul of our Sister City program, with Germany, also El Salvador. She and an incredible teacher by the name of Claire McWilliams initiated the program, a great humanitarian program there that you were part of. And uh, I just learned last week that... Uh, the International Sister Cities Association gave the award first prize to Fountain Hills. Mm -hmm. And now to you, Mayor Trump. First of all, you attended fundraising efforts at Mayor Miles' home where we raised $8,000 for the high school students and for the humanitarian trip. Two, you attended and participated in several Fountain Hills events, including the final meeting of parents with chaperones, and I believe it was a month before we left. We were instrumental with town support of mayor for the past four years in helping the Sister City program. In 2009, here we are, you officiated in the most diplomatic manner with an awful lot of protocol, a reception given to the Salvadorian foreign minister, the first time the foreign minister has visited the state of Arizona. We thank you for that. Please take a look at that picture. You see something different there? Yes, we miss Council Member McMahon. Rest in peace. Take a look at all the other people. You're all smiling. You're all having a good time. Keep that in mind, Council Member. Why is it short? At a council meeting before 44 students and 16 chaperones left for Salvadoran soil, you, Mayor, gave us a powerful message of support, confidence, trust, and representing the town of Clinton Hills. And this was, it's all about giving back to people. Please look at this picture, and you'll see in that picture the American flag. Our American flag flies proudly in the offices and outside the offices of the city of Apaco. And now, Mayor, with uh, all due respect, I would like you to, I'm going to read you two plaques. The first one given to you by the government of El Salvador. It's in Spanish. So, uh, the Council General of El Salvador gives and presents acknowledgement to the Mayor J.T. Schwum, Mayor of the City of Fountain Hills, Arizona, for your valued and helpful support 
between the cities of Fountain Hills and Otago, the Salvadorian people will never forget. And here's another one. It says, J.C. Plum, Mayor of Fountain Hills, with deepest respect and appreciation for what you have done for El Salvador. And Vicky Melendez, Honorary Council, Republic of El Salvador. Thank you. Would you come down and accept these? so nice. And I accept these plaques for the people, for the students, for our council and staff and all of Fountain Hills. Um, I just am the mayor, you know, and you guys did all the great work and made all the awesome connections and the kids, the youth of our community built those houses and touched all those lives and gave a lot of folks in Fountain Hills a, a huge point of pride and a great deal of hope in a world that can be a little cynical of our youth. So, um, Councillor uh, Melinda has mentioned already the, in the news you'll hear more and more about. Um, again, our sister cities organization here in Little Old Fountain Hills has awarded the best sister cities program, seriously, in the world. And then we talked about Fountain Hills being the best in the world. This one, it's true. They actually were awarded a prize by the Cities, yes, for the second time, Sister Cities International for being the best program in the world. And uh, I just have a note, Mayor Morgan, for you from the town um, council, and it says, uh, this year on behalf of the town council, we wish to extend hearty congratulations to the Fountain Hill Sister Cities Corporation for receiving 2011 Sister Cities International Best Overall Program Award in recognition of outstanding exchange work done and to goal to advance the goals and the missions of the Sister City, Sister Cities program. We are very proud of the work you did to rebuild the homes of the Taco El Salvador following the tragic mudslide. Our local Sister Cities organization not only accomplished noble humanitarian work, but also allowed our Fountain Hills High School students to experience the joy and rewards that come through service to others. You truly deserve the award. We are very proud of Fountain Hills Sister Cities Corporation and appreciate your efforts not only with the Taco El Salvador, but Casterly, Belgium, Deerdorf, Germany as well. Your efforts generally enhance the town of Fountain Hills. Sincerely, Mayor Jay Schlum. So, please pass our thanks to your awesome organization, and you do great work. And that was, those efforts were just exacerbated by our connection to El Salvador and, and the heart that, uh, Enrique Melendez has for his uh, native country, and thank you for allowing us to touch your people in your country in, in a special way. So thank you, and thank you for the recognition. It's a great thing to celebrate, and very proud of it, and I'm proud of our community. So thank you. Thank you again, and uh, this is just a small piece that you may be seeing for the first time on television, but um, our former mayor, former council members are huge support on an ongoing basis here in Fountain Hill, so that's just a small example of it. So we, do have, we are very fortunate in Fountain Hill. All right, now we'll move on to, uh, well, first of all, 
It's a rare occasion as well when my family is here. So let me just point out them before they sneak out. My daughter Carly and my son Tim and my beautiful bride of almost 25 years coming up December, Denise Marie. Right there, thanks for coming out tonight as well. And my mother snuck in too, Mommy. Nice to see you. Dawn Plum there. Thank you for coming out. And thanks for a lot of other friends uh, for coming out today to uh, help run the Cantino and I's last regularly scheduled meeting tonight. Uh, we appreciate it. We will be here one more time. Uh, well, a couple more times. But a special session will be held next week to validate the vote, which will take about two seconds. And then we'll have a gavel passing ceremony and a reception on June 7th. So just before the next regularly scheduled, scheduled meeting, that will be run by the new mayor. So uh, everybody's invited to that reception and the gavel passing ceremony the first Thursday of next month, the 7th, at uh, 5.30 reception and 6 o'clock gavel passing ceremony. And then stay, like most of you are doing tonight, for budget talk at the regularly scheduled uh, meeting at 6.30. All right, on to call to the public. Anyone with speaker cards tonight? No, sir. All right. On to our consent agenda. I'll go through these items. Item 1, consideration of approving the town council meeting minutes from May 3rd, 2012, and that's it again. That's kind of been uh, the last couple of meetings. Just one item. Could I get a motion on that? So moved. And a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mayor Schmum? Aye. Council Mayor Dickey? Aye. Council Member Contino? Aye. Council Member Luce? Aye. Council Member Brown? Aye. Council Member Elkin? Aye. Mayor six zero. Great. All right, on to the regular agenda. First item, consideration of Resolution 2012-14, Adopting the Interconnected Trails Plan. Mr. Mark Mayer, how are you? Sure. That looks like a taco. Exit out of this. <laughs> Here comes that. Here comes that. Here we There are some members of the council. You may recall that back in December, um, myself and representatives from Olson Associates were here at the uh, joint meeting of the Parks and Rec Commission and the council. And one of the topics we discussed that night was the uh, uh, work that had been done by Olson Associates to bring forward uh, at 60% completion uh, the concept of the FIT program, as we call it, for Fountain Hills Interconnecting Trails. Right? It's our urban trails program that we started uh, over a year ago uh, with support, funding and support from the council. We're back this evening to show you the final version that went before the Parks and Rec Commission earlier this week and was voted uh, to recommend to uh, this body uh, unanimously that it be uh, considered and hopefully passed. Um, just a little bit of background information. Uh, you may recall that the council had actually set a goal for this year to provide a multiple-use trail and bicycle system. We think that this plan that we're going to share with you this evening uh, brings that to a conclusion. Then we would ultimately move into the implementation phase. You may recall that we have some funds requested in this year's budget to begin implementation later on this fall and uh, be able to unveil the first of what we hope to be future trail sites. Um, this work was not completed by myself. Uh, there were two other gentlemen that also assisted. Um, Paul Mood, Development Services Director, and Randy Harrell, Town Engineer. And the three of us have been working with um, Olson Associates ever since. Joining me this evening is uh, Randall Koff, who I will uh, bring to the uh, podium here in just a second. Randall has done the bulk of the work associated with this plan. You may recall in this, in this current budget we have some dollars set aside for, for their services. And uh, Tonight we hope to bring that to fruition. Um, you may recall that when we put this plan together, we recognize that uh, while funds were limited, we tried to concentrate on areas that we could develop trails that were uh, already fairly well in place, uh, hopefully completely in place, so that uh, with minimum costs uh, associated with putting out some signage and maybe a little sidewalk striping, those kinds of things, uh, or street striping, I should say, uh, we would be able to utilize the existing parking, uh, restroom facilities, and drinking water. So not surprisingly, the first trail we looked at was, um, and perhaps most fittingly, was the downtown trail. And that's going to be showcased this evening. 
Uh, that's the trail that we would propose to start with that takes you through to downtown. Um, I also want to mention that, uh, as I inf indicated earlier, that there are funds requested in this next year so we can bring it to implementation. So with that, um, I will turn it over to Mr. Toth. Thank you. How are you doing? Excellent. Um, as Mark said, my name is Randall Toth from with Olson Associates, and we work directly with staff to um, help develop the, the scene, the identity, and some of the elements for the, the trail system itself. And this was initially, this was very early on. Staff did a great job of identifying probably about a dozen different trails within the city. And as Mark said, they utilized um, existing sidewalks, uh, curb ramps, um, taking you know accessibility and things like that. And just to um, help limit those costs and make this thing easier to implement. This is the first trail that we focused on here. We're calling it the Civic Center Trail. And you can see it starts down around the fountain, works its way up around Town Hall, and then comes back around. And, and you, can, you can see on there some of the elements that we would have posed on this trail, directional markers, mile markers. Um, the thing we're really going to focus on is the trailhead right now. And I believe that all of you saw this probably at the last presentation. This was the initial identity concept and, and trail kiosk. And we developed this with staff. There were probably uh, at least a dozen or so different concepts. We joined the lit down, and this is what we, we settled on. So as we move forward, since the last time we, we spoke with you, um, we developed a, a full identity package with colors, uh, logos for print, logos for signage, um, and, and a, a project-specific font so that we can keep the identity all the same and consistent so that when you see these, these elements and these items, you know that it's part of the fit system. This is the final design for the trail kiosk. Um, one, one of the, the features of this is normally when you, you go to a, a trailhead, usually the signage is very two-dimensional. You just approach it from one side because you park in one spot. This is an urban type trail setting. We try to make it three-dimensional so that you have views from all around. When you see this thing from any angle, you can instantly identify it and know what it is. And this would happen to be the orange trail would be the first trail for the Civic Center. Um, a lot of the elements here, the, the native stone, steel, um, play off some of the things you have going on right out here along Avenue of the Fountains. I'm just trying to tie it all back into the town. Another thing uh, with this as well is while you can't um, vandal proof something, you can at least make it as resistant as possible. And we that was a pretty a pretty big feature when talking with staff of what we wanted to do. Uh, lastly, this is what the signage could look like. Sort of hit apart. Um, when we talked about this this trail in particular would be the orange trail. Each additional trail would have a different color code, a different number. Um, and then the sign on the right would be your overall trail map that would be the same on every trail kiosk. And you'd also have the opportunity um, for rules and regulations and the opportunity to post um, notices for town events, things like that, get the word out. Um, that's really all we have. Uh, do you guys have any comments, questions? Sure. Thank you, Randall. Thank you, Mark. Our council, questions, we're up to fit. I can get into, I can get fit now, right? <laughs> I've been waiting for this all the whole time. Council Member Leger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mark, Mayor, question, please. When do you all anticipate uh, completing this first phase? I know that we've, we've budgeted dollars in FY12-13. Uh, when do you see this coming to fruition this first phase? Mayor Slum, Council Member Leger. Um, our plan is, assuming that the, uh, the, the funding remains intact, would be to uh, begin to implement this summer so that we be in a position that we can unveil the trail this fall. Oh, awesome. Very good. And just kind of a, an overview, um, I know this was discussed um, in, in strategic plans and so forth and so on. What, what strategic goal is this address? The strategic, uh, let me, if I can, let me give you two. Uh, the strategic value is recreational opportunity amenities, and then the uh, council goal specifically was provide multi-use trail and bicycle system. 
So this this does buy into the citizen driven strategic plan and definitely and that's where our focus is. Thank that's you. directly where it came from. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Uh Councilman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Do you see any special striking to keep walkers and bicyclers on the right and the left side of the sidewalk or or is there any separation uh, striking going to happen? Here's from uh, Councilmember Brown. Um, actually, a lot of those uh, trails that we had picked are already striped for either a bikeway or a bike path. So we would envision that uh, correctly that people would be using, if they had bikes, would be using the road instead of the sidewalk. But most of those also have full sidewalks on them so that somebody, if they were simply a pedestrian or walking on the trail or without a bike, would be able to use the sidewalk. So I think they're, they're intended to be multi-purpose. But we, the reason why we included those funds is was not only to do signage, but places where we could put a bicycle trail or pathway through there, we would be able to strike the um, pavement accordingly. Thanks. Got anyone from the public on this item? No, ma'am. All right. I know if you put no camping is on there, so <laughs> people might assume hiking and camping, but in the urban setting, maybe not. But uh, Councilmember Dickey. Mayor, I uh, motion to approve Resolution 2012-14, accepting the Fountain Hills Interconnected Trail Plan. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Mayor, 6-0. Thank you. Mayor, Mayor. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. As I like Randall. to refer to, my name is Mayor. I am not the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> I am just a mayor. I'm just one, too. <laughs> All right, item... Three, consideration with possible direction of staff regarding an application for local transportation assistance funds two projects funds through Valley Metro for fiscal year 11-12 in the amount of $65,986 for transit purposes. Ken. Mayor Slum, um, Deputy Town Manager Getty has a okay. presentation for that and we'll open it up for discussion and recommendation. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. Prior to fiscal year 10-11, the town will provide special transportation services for residents for medical appointments and, and social services. And that was funded by a grant through lottery proceeds. And we called it LTAF-2. In fiscal year 10-11, the legislature swept those LTAF-2 funding for cities and towns, and the town had to cancel the program, and residents had to provide their own transportation. However, this fiscal year, the courts have reinstated the LTAF-2 funds for cities to use for transportation purposes. Fountain Hills is eligible to receive $66,000 if we apply by May 31st. Normally staff doesn't like to come to the council and make recommendations or presentations without fully vetting out the program. However, due to the time limitations on this, because we have to apply by May 31st, staff did some preliminary research on this and is bringing forward a recommendation to the council. However, um, if we uh, apply to Valley Metro for LTAF-2 funding and we apply for one program or the other, we can always go back after we've had time to vet it out more and do more research and get more information that we are able to change the scope of work of that. And since subsequent to this packet, there has been some additional information that is even causes us more reason to do a little more research, specifically um, we are also eligible for what they call PTF funding, which is in the amount of $33,000, bringing the total for for transportation program to $100,000. And both of those grants, there's no general fund match at all. So we're bringing this forward to the council for a recommendation. What we originally proposed and are still going to propose for the purposes of the grant is a um, it just left me dial a ride program. Um, because of the other, there were two programs that we thought would fit. One was a, what they call a flex stop circulator, which would be a fixed route transportation system that would go within the community and hook up to the bus, the regular Valley Metro bus at Mayo Clinic. There are some requirements that we need to um, verify as far as whether we have to build bus stops, whether we maintain them, whether they have to be ADA um, accessible, which would add to the cost and not sure if that's something that we could afford. So for the purposes of filling out the grant, we're proposing the dial-a-ride. That is something that we can control the cost. It would be limited to ADA 
certified residents and it's, it's, it, there are no other requirements where we would have to build bus stops because it's a door-to-door -door service. So we are proposing that in order to move forward and be able to apply for the grant, that we submit the grant for the dial a -ride program, but with the understanding that if once the manager and we've done more research on it, that we will be able to change it to the other program if it makes more sense. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Good. Thanks, Julie. Anyone on the public on this? I don't no, ma'am. Any questions for Julie or Ken, um, Vice Mayor? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to know if, um, maybe this is for Andrew, if it would be um, okay to make a motion that uh, in some way directs the town manager to apply for grants and for any other funding so that we make sure we have, so it's LCAP 2 and any other funds that are available for a local transit program and do it in a general way like that, because I understand there's also maybe some flexibility in the timing of this also, and if um, that was okay with the colleagues here and with you, that we could put it in that way so that it doesn't go out as a recommendation for a particular thing and then we have to kind of undo that or maybe change that. Mr. McMahon, Vice Mayor, you can make the motion condition that way and you can also and direct the manager to evaluate other options and to uh, report back to the council members that may not be in the public setting, may just be a memo back to you to provide you information and follow up on the other things that have been discussed uh, as well as other programs that may have become available. Um, but because of the May 31st deadline, I think you do need to give them that flexibility. Mayor, the reason, one of the reasons I mentioned that is because I know there's a, a desire and there's been some talk about connectivity with the 106 out of Mayo and so I, I wouldn't want to give an impression that that's out of the out of the realm of the discussion quite yet until we know for sure. Sure. Councilmember Rossi. Julie, is there any? Um, well, let, let me ask this question first. Is there any chance that we could exceed the amount that's being, uh, or the cost of this program could exceed the grant? And any any thoughts on that? Would it would the town then pick up the balance at that point? I'm going to Council Member Elke, um, with the one program, meaning the dial ride we can control the cost by controlling the number of trips, who goes on it, how far they can go, how many times they can do it. With the flex stop situated, that might be a little bit more difficult to control the cost. We know what the cost for the route would be because we know it's $6 a mile. We can control how many trips we do within town. What we can't control and know is the requirements for the ADA, the bus stops, if we have to maintain them, if they can be flag stops, if they have to be shelter stops. Those are pieces of information that we don't know yet. Do, yeah. do we have staff allocated to manage um, the riders and making sure they're not exceeding the numbers or and how much time is that is going to be allocated for that? I mean, if someone tells me that actually, actually it would be Valley Metro that would be managing the program. We would apply for the grant and we would give the funds over to them, but we would set the criteria on the dial ed specifically. We would set what criteria that was. Right. And lastly, Mayor, um, if, the, if the funds weren't there next year, uh, does this in any way obligate us to continue on with this program after this next fiscal year? Um, Council Member Elke, we did question um, Valley Metro on the likelihood of those funds being available in subsequent years and because it was a court action that reinstated those funds for transportation that it's highly unlikely that those funds would be gone again. So, in other words, the legislature can't sweep them again. The only issue would be on because it's driven by lottery proceeds, but historically the funds have been there until the legislature took it. So there is uh, likely to be money. Again, one program we can control the cost. The other one, maybe not so much. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I uh, like the flex stop because I feel like that, as uh, Councilwoman Dickey was talking about, it gives us more opportunity to have people come into Fountain Hills as well as people that can't get out of Fountain Hills, get out of Fountain Hills and shop and do things. I think that we're missing the boat sometimes because we're talking about tourism and it's on the agenda tonight to do that, to give money to the chamber to do that for tourism. And I think that this would be an opportunity for people to come out to Fountain Hills, see Fountain Hills, eat out here, and then go back home. So I, I, I think I'm not for this 
or I'm not against the dollar, right? But I think we ought to expand our services. You know, we got to start looking ahead and quit thinking about just certain areas. And being handicapped, I think we can eliminate a lot of the stops you're talking about by putting them where they don't have to have a particular handicap because of the way the buses are constructed today. Mayor Schwarm, members of the council, and I, I agree with um, Councilmember Contino and and Vice Mayor. Um, what we we, we just need to vet it a little bit longer. We just haven't had enough time since the, since the court case and the ruling. With that, we need to look at any potential unintended consequences that might cost us additional money that we don't have for this. So we want to make sure that we've looked at it from all four directions. And then if we can, then we'd like to come back and look at the circulator. But we need to, the main goal tonight is to get that application in before the 31st. Okay. Councilmember Lovett. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, Ken. I was, that's kind of where I was, what I was going to state. I mean, basically we're here this evening to authorize, um, staff to go forward and, and put a grant application in. And as I look at the emo, uh, the motion here, it says approve the submission of grant application, uh, uh, funding in the amount of 65, you know, for dollar ride. Um, the motion could simply just exclude dollar ride and just authorize um, the grant application. Um, and um, we can kind of uh, determine that as we move forward. Or do we need to be specific in the grant application? And the other item is do we need to add the PTF? Is that a separate grant application? That's what I was going to, I was wondering if it was able to make a motion that just says apply for LCAP 2 and any available funding for a local transit program, not put an amount in there and also not put necessarily the part about um, being administered by RPTA because since there is some, there is other information that might come forward that wouldn't be actually administered by RPTA, it's possible. So rather than Rather than making it narrow, I was wondering if it was okay to say something like that. Mr. Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor, that motion would be fine as a substitute. Uh, one more thing to consider in terms of grant agreements. If if we believe that we'll have a grant agreement back prior to the 31st, which I don't think we would, it might be a good idea to authorize the manager to execute any grant agreements as long as they don't have matching fund requirements. Good. So purely one way. All right. Anyone else, or need to restate the motion, a motion, or make a motion? Okay. Vice Mayor, I move to authorize and direct the town manager to apply for LTA, LTAF two and other available funding for a local transit program and execute the grant agreement. Very good. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor and keep saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Mayor, six zero. Thanks. Thank you, Julie, on that one. Item four, presentation by the Town of Fountain Hills Executive Budget Committee relating to a recommendation for funding and scope of work for Fountain Hills Chamber of Commerce, Tourism, Fountain Hills Community Theater, Youth Arts, Expanded Hands Food Bank, Social Service, and Boys and Girls Club, the Scottsdale McKee Branch Team Program. Ken. Mayor Schwann, members of the council, um, I'd like first to have the Deputy Town Manager Getty give a, a presentation on a description of what the uh, um, community contracts are tonight, and then we can talk about the discussions and recommendations. Good, thanks. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. In fiscal year 2007-2008, the town issued a request for proposals with a scope of services um, for specific services within the community and awarded three-year contracts through fiscal year 10 for um, social services, for theater, for tourism, and for um, Boys and Girls Club. Those contracts have been amended for the past two years through an extension. Um, based on the discussions at the goal setting retreat, staff asked the contractors to propose a scope of work to the budget committee, and the presentations were given to the budget committee and are included in your packet. The goal tonight is to approve the scope or a scope and direct staff to prepare the contracts for the scope of services. And that, I'd be happy to answer any questions from that. All right, good. Thank you, Julie. Anyone from the public on this item? Yes, Mayor. One. Linda Bardot. Great. Mayor 
Welcome, Ms. Bordeaux. How are you? This is officially your last meeting, so thank you for being um, a great man and uh, being up there for us. And uh, I'd like to ask, I'm glad you're sitting right here. I have a bunch of questions for Julie, I think, about some of the tourism dollars. The Visitors Bureau Tourism Survey that was done in 06 that quantified how much it was per individual. Do you know how much that study cost, Julie? I would suggest rolling out your questions. Okay, that so would be the first one. The second one is I know that we're proposing to do it again, so I'm curious to know how much that study was and how much the figure is due to study again. The theater, I was lucky enough to go up in Connecticut and right, we used to hop on Metro North and go to the best New York theaters and then have access to the Yale Repertory Theater in New Haven and all the wonderful summer stock up at the Berkshire. So I'm a real fan of the theater. I've been to many of our productions here. Um, I'm curious to know, though, I've been going through looking at some of what the finances are of the theater. What percentage of our productions um, actually either break even or produce a, a profit? I'm not the best researcher, and so far what I've seen to come up with is that they're losing money. Uh, I know that it was $72,240 that was in the budget last year for the theater. And is that just to fund the production? Or I'm assuming because I know the buildings they uh, use are basically rent free for them, and so is the maintenance on this building. So I'm, I'm wondering is that the amount of money that we're underwriting for the productions that don't break even? And I'm wondering why we can't pump up that theater to make it do better. I also was looking through the um, proposal for the Tourism Bureau, and I'm wondering why we don't do a cultural spin on that. We have so much great art. Why can't we combine like a theater, a dinner, art walk, some kind of an upscale cultural event included in the Tourism Bureau? That might be a way to get some people from Mesa, uh, Scottsdale that don't want to drive all the way downtown Phoenix or the Herberger to have some, some great theater. So uh, I know that there's a lot of questions, Julia, because I remember them all. Um, but I think that's it. So thank you. Thanks, Rhonda. Anyone else from public? Was that it from public? Okay. Good. I'm sure we'll probably touch on those. And I didn't know if do any of the um, of our partners, our, our vendor contract providers, wish to share anything? Did they say they wanted, wanted to share anything or just help with answering some questions? Um, Mayor, members of the council, yes, the providers for all the groups, I believe, are here this evening. And if you would like to ask them a specific question, I'm sure they'd be happy to come up. Okay, good. Thanks, Julie. All right, Council, where would you like to start on this? Um, I know we talked about it. 45 days ago or so and, and talked about you know, some real general things. Um, now the Executive Budget Committee has done some more work with the vendors and the contracts to be considered are in our packet um, along with the dollar amount. So um, scope of work is included and that's what we've worked towards last year and made a little bit of progress was trying to hone in on the scopes of work because we hear feedback. Why are you giving money to charity? Why are you giving money to this group? And, and obviously the scope of work shows that we're contracting for services um, in the community, but obviously um, we have the decision council um, and it's part of the budget to include whatever dollar amounts and the scope of work to accompany those things. Um, but I think that this year is you know, even a little more clear with the scope of work, so I appreciate the efforts from the executive budget committee and staff and, uh, and the, our partners in working towards that. Um, Anyone like to begin with any particular program or any particular scope of work? Uh, Vice Mayor. I actually have a question. Since it looks like it's one motion, can I vote on it and talk about it? Andrew. Mr. Mayor, Mayor, Vice Mayor, it, it would be better if we break that one component out so that you're able to vote on the others if we're, we're going to do so. We can certainly break it into four. Or two, even just one and three again. All right, and just to clarify on that, with Julie and, and perhaps to Andrew, um, the suggested motion here, and you mentioned it, I just wanted to clarify. Um, we're lo staff looking for us to make a motion to give you direction to work with the providers on finalizing the contract. Is that correct? Yes, Mayor, that's correct. And when would the dollars be, I mean, council obviously has decisions on how to spend the dollars, so we'd be working with them on a contract. When would the, when would the um, affirmative motion be made to spend those dollars? 
Uh, Mayor, members of the council, they, um, I would expect that the amounts would be approved in the final budget, which would be in June, and at the same time we would hopefully bring those contracts forward. What we're looking for tonight is sort of, is this scope of work that the group presented, is this the scope of work that the council wants, is it, and does it meet the goals? That was what the, um, when we talked to the groups, we had them come in and say, you know, we gave them the council goals and asked them to make a presentation to meet those goals, and that's what um, is in the packet. So the uh, motion from the council would be to direct staff to go ahead and prepare the contracts with these groups with, the, with their proposal for their scope of work. Yeah, because the July 1 is the beginning of a new fiscal year for mostly, well, for us and our funding of these organizations. And I guess the longer you wait, the further they're kind of hanging out there and not knowing what to uh, expect. Yes, so, ma'am. All right, so we're not making a decision on what's being expended. We're just trying to help direct staff to get a little further down the road on these items, correct? Um, what you would be doing is directing staff to go ahead and prepare the contracts. The final ratification would be at a future council meeting in June with the budget. The, um, good. And I know Councilmember Hanson's not here tonight. Um, but we do have a new mayor coming in, of course, and one additional new council member. Um, so they'll, they'll have opportunity to discuss this at length as well, correct? Correct. Um, the other thing that we talked about and did over the last few years was it didn't we reduce each one of these last year 20%? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. And the year before that was close to that, wasn't it? It was a little bit, 16% or so, okay. So we've been on a trajectory of reducing these along with the budget obviously being reduced as well. Yes, and that for fiscal year 12 13, there's no more reductions. Yeah, so they're, they're at last year's dollar amount? Well, Correct. Okay. Correct. Good, thanks, Julie. I just want to make sure everybody understood the process we're going through. So I, I just don't want to make too many um, assumptions. Um, obviously, most of the council is here is going to remain here. Um, I, I don't want to get you guys spinning your wheels if, if there are going to be additional changes, or at least not too many additional changes. So I can understand the desire and our respect for the providers to try to get as far down the road as we can. Um, council? Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Just a general comment about every, all of them is that they are all accessible to everybody. I think that was one of the things that we always want to make sure when we have a program or something like that, that no, there's nothing exclusionary about any of the contacts, at least that I could see. It appears that it, everybody who lives here would have access to these services, and that's important. And if I miss something, you let me know, but it looks to me like that that is the case. Yeah. And I think it's good to clarify. They're, the one-pagers are pretty good. I think it's probably not um, a bad idea if you might want to go through those one-pagers for each of the organizations. Because uh, folks, some folks in the public just feel there's money being given away. It's maybe not a bad thing to review the scope of work. Uh, I think each of them has a one-pager at the beginning of the presentation here. Um, and then it gets into a little more detail. But for example, the scope of work for the tourism um, through the chamber is $103,200 and then it breaks down the scope of work there uh, for the administration, finance and management in the office of $54,000 and it's got advertising broken out and media relations broken out further. The total amount there um, is about $42,000. The niche marketing, uh, $41,000 I'm sorry there and then it's got niche marketing event sponsorships uh, for a variety of different things coming out for 12000 and um, some additional printing and a contingency and amount there, again, all totaling 103000 So the town uh, utilizes the Visitors Bureau for our tourism outsourced vendor and has been doing that for a number of years. And it has all the services that the town is purchasing broken out in that scope of work. Did I miss anything there, Julie? Is that? No, no, no that's correct. It's in our packet. People want to review it, too. I thought the member was that. Just an observation. Um, as you go through that spreadsheet and the scope of work, which is the proposed tourism program, it actually comes up to $173,500. Oh. The town is uh, proposing to fund it at $103,000, 103, for that. 
particular program that's been proposed, and then that balance um, of seventy thousand dollars is made up through other funding sources. I believe uh, through Fort McDowell, some money comes from there, some money comes from the state. So the total program is one hundred seventy-three five. With with that's the impact that we'd be looking at, and there's other people involved in helping to fund that program. Good. Yep. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Oh, Councilman Rocky. Thank you. Um, just kind of going back to a little history. Last year, when we were experiencing the, the budget shortfalls that we were, um, we very necessarily had to cut and a number of things. We cut staff, we cut funding, and that's where we did the 20% cut in these particular contracts last year. Now, early on, uh, serving on the executive budget committee, early on in the discussions and the meetings, there was talk of reducing these contracts again another 20%. And going back to a comment that I made last year around this time, um, there was talk, uh, I, I mentioned that, uh, let me clarify one thing too. When I, when I refer to the community service contracts, I know we've got four up here, um, but when I refer to the community service contracts, I look at the theater, the Boys and Girls Club, and the Extended Hand Food Bank. In my opinion, those are different than what we do through the Chamber of Commerce. So when I mention community service contracts, that's what I'm referring to. But last year around this time, I had mentioned it. We're having these budget shortfalls, we're having these difficulties, and these agencies to look at either additional cuts next budget year or no funding at all because of what's going on and, and, and the difficulties that the town's having. Now, early on this year, during the budget discussions, again, there was a talk of another 20% reduction and maybe even uh, higher percentage to the community service contracts. Now, I wasn't at the council meeting. I was actually out of the country. You may recall I was on a delayed honeymoon. And staff presented that this year's shortfall wasn't going to be as bad as anticipated. So staff's recommendation was to maintain the status quo. And my understanding or review is that the council seemed to acquiesce to that and agree with that. Um, my opinion is that with these community service contracts that we have, we spend so much time, so much staff time, so much uh, council time on these contracts. And what we're getting back out of them certainly adds value to the community. There's, there's absolutely no doubt about it. But these programs with the theater, or the funding with the theater, with the Boys and Girls Club, and the Extended Hand Food Bank, they all existed prior to receiving town funding. Um, and I don't think that if the town were to continue to cut or to eliminate that funding that we wouldn't have a theater in town, we wouldn't have a Boys and Girls Club, we wouldn't have a food bank. Um, and I would like to see us continue down that path that we had discussed before about reducing these contracts because although the projections as far as revenue isn't as dire as we initially anticipated, it is still dire because we don't have the funding for the roads. We don't have, I think, what is it, Ken, about a million dollars that we've got to find out there to fund the maintenance of the roads. So it is still a dire situation out there as far as the uh, town's budget is concerned. And I, I know it's, it's not very popular to talk about this. I mean, it's not very popular to say, well, how about cutting these things because, well, you're anti-kid, you're anti-theater, and you don't want to feed the hungry. Um, but I think we should have a discussion about this, and I think we should move towards reducing the funding and the town and the taxpayer not continue funding these three community service contracts. I'm not suggesting that they be eliminated altogether this year, but I think we should have a discussion of some type of a reduction of them. Um, I just want to put that out there for discussion. Thanks, Dr. Morales. <clears throat> And we'll get to some of Ms. Bordeaux's uh, points as well. Anyone want to comment? Uh, Council Member Contino. Yes. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve the proposed scope of the work of each contractor and direct staff to prepare professional service agreements at the funding levels proposed by the Executive Budget Committee. All right. Thank you for the motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Well, there's probably some more discussion here, I imagine, on the motion which encompasses pretty much everything, right, Andrew? Um, I think it's like that. 
You need to break and out the... Yeah. Um, then then that should just exclude the theater contract somehow? So, so I can right vote there. on the other? We can certainly make an amendment. All right. Do we have a, we have a motion to amend that motion? Yes. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Do we need to move on that motion? Or um, we need to vote on that motion before we have Not discussion sure. on the original? So the motion to carve out the community theater portion and we'll discuss the uh, everything but the community theater portion in the new motion, right? Or the amended motion. All right. So we have a motion, uh, the amendment, voting on the amendment to carve out, um, to separate the discussion so Vice Mayor can, can be part of it. We have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion on that motion or amendment? No, oh, I've confused everybody. All in favor of the amendment and keep saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Senator 5 1. Thanks. All right. So we are back to the original motion, which is, uh, or the amended motion, which now is the items other than the community theater item. Um, I want to just comment on, um, and then get some, see if we can get some answers or clarity on what Ms. Bordeaux had shared before we move forward on any of them. Um, is the, what um, Councilor Morowski talked about, I think is something we've talked about, maybe we should talk about almost every meeting, is the role of government. And uh, being in a small town, I think it's right up by what Council Member uh, Elke had shared is, um, We've met with different organizations at times, and they wonder why aren't you funding this? You know, aren't don't you value this? And it's often, well, yeah, certainly we value it. Value it as a community. We're just not certain the government needs to fund this. There's other avenues, and Councilor Elke pointed out that you know, in the past, government maybe didn't fund portions of some things. Um, and then there's what I mentioned at, on the onset of this is I like the scope of work now because it's not uh, too. Um, it's, it's more and more common now for towns, cities, states, government to contract services. And that's what we've done for a large amount of time. So, for example, Boys and Girls Club, just to pick one, it talks about what their programs are. They're going to run a program that does X, Y, and Z for the town of Fountain Hills, and they're asking for that funding to cover that program. Is that a program that, are those services or that type of program something we would have done in-house otherwise? Perhaps. So we're looking at utilizing perhaps their lever leveraging their talents, their facilities, and their staff to uh, affect those services on behalf of the town of Fountain Hill. So I think there's two important things to understand. What's the role? What does government, the town of Fountain Hill, feel is appropriate for us to fund? And then also understanding that we're not giving money to charities. We're contracting for services just as we contract for a lot of other services, including our town of um, his services. So I just wanted to share that, and then I thought we'd see if there is anything uh, that Ms. Bordeaux had shared related to, she mentioned the survey, and um, also the cultural events, along, among other things. Um, do you recall what she shared, and can you speak to some of those items? Um, I mean, some members of the council, I believe the first question she asked was how much it cost to do, and I'm not sure if she meant to do the RFP, but the, there was no cost other than staff time to put that together. We didn't pay somebody to do it. So if, if I'm understanding it, the question. I may have done a, I'm not sure if a survey we did. A survey that the Chamber of Tourism did that, that talked about the value of tourism, and that, that was probably that one. I think that was something that they had paid for, not the town. Right. Thank you. Um, and then, you know, Mark probably made some notes as to uh, what Ms. Porto talked about, that culture of and and, and accentuating the art that we have here in music in Fountain Hills, making sure that's plugged into our program for uh, tourism. Um, was there something else that you took note of that Ms. Burdell mentioned? Um, there, um, she asked a question about the profitability of the theater, and, and I think that's probably a question that the theater should respond to, not staff. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, we Do we want to ask any questions of the providers before we move on our um, amended motion for everything but the theater tonight? Okay. Like our council member of the day. Just a general co uh, comment in, with, with respect to all of these contracts. I think 
I think the question that I'm continually um, wrestling with uh, with respect to uh, uh, Councilman um, Elke's um, viewpoint, which which I respect and I appreciate, and, and frankly I don't I don't disagree with. But I kind of step back from that and ask, have to ask the question: What type of community do we want to be? And as I look at these service contracts, to me they're value adding to the community. They're amenities for the community. And you could go as far as saying that. Um, several of these, well, let's see, we carved one out, um, that they in some ways contribute to tourism. Um, in some ways they attract new residents to our town. Um, so to me, when I look at the amount of money that we would save by cutting these by 20%, it, it's not that significant. Um, it, it certainly is dollars, but I think we get value for what, what we're paying for, and it's added amenities. And as the mayor has stated, these are extension of programs that Parks and Rec would probably be providing in other municipalities that we don't have in house. As we are what I like to refer to as a hybrid government, we contract out for a lot of services. And to me, these re represent those, those particular contracted services. If you were to um, pull these down another 20%, you're talking about maybe saving $20,000. I think there's more than $20,000 worth of value to the community by maintaining these services and these amenities. And particularly, one uh, does bring in um, half of its clients at about 50% from out of town, which is, is a value add to tourism. Um, but, but the savings of $22,000, if you were to get rid of them all and, and, and keep tourism, your savings of $100,000. Now that sounds like a lot of money and it certainly, it certainly is a lot of money. But when you look in the grand scope of things in terms of our capital project needs, that doesn't even get close to addressing um, taking care of our roads, taking care of our capital needs. I mean, if you look at our capital improvement plan over the next 20 years, it's about $150 million. So I guess the question I wrestle with, are we a community with a heart and soul? Um, or are we just um, asphalt, grass, and uh, mortar? So I don't disagree with the fact that there would be savings, um, but I do think that these are, are value-adding. And for those folks that have an interest in these particular community contracts, Mayor, um, we did originally propose to drop these down another 20%, and through budget discussions, we've, we've brought them up by that particular amount. So. I think I respect everyone's point of view. Um, when I looked at the strategic plan in 2006 and when I looked at the uh, revamped strategic plan, which is input from our citizens, they are asking for amenities. And to me, these are amenities that are value adding and really add to the value of what I call small town character and a community that has a heart and soul. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I appreciate uh, Councilman Rajay's uh, comment, and uh, whether we have a heart or not, I, I think what we need to look at, we need, we need to look at the numbers. I mean, essentially with the food bank, we're providing $30,000 to, 30, propose $30,250 to give out food to those in need or to support, uh, to support that program. The theater. Now the town does support the theater in addition to the 72,240 that's proposed by maintaining the building and leasing the building for I believe it's a dollar a year uh, at no cost to the theater. So even without this contract, we do support, and the town does support the uh, support the theater. And the, the, the funding there is essentially, in my opinion, or appears as just underwriting the performances. Um, and, and again, this is nothing against the theaters. There's nothing against the food bank. Um, and then the Boys and Girls Club, uh, Boys and Girls Club of Scottsdale, uh, team programming that we support, uh, in the amount of $80,000. I know, uh, some, uh, up on the stairs have questioned the funding that we provide to the Boys and Girls Club, um, because in order to participate in the Boys and Girls Club, you have to pay a fee. So they're receiving funding from the town, and then you have to pay a fee as a resident or a member of the Boys and Girls Club in order to participate in these team programs. Um, so again, I just question, I just question the funding in, in years past, and this predated me, 
um, my understanding is that the various community organizations would come forward and ask for a certain amount of money that was in the pot uh, that year and provide for particular types of service. And then it got narrowed down to, to these three. Um, you know, often I've, I've had folks come up to me, why doesn't the Rotary get funding to do X, or why doesn't Qantas get it for this, or VFW, or the Legion, or these sorts of different programs. And, and I do agree, can't disagree as far as the value that's, that's being added. I just question whether or not government should be providing the funds for these. Thank you, Councilor Ralphie. Councilor Farmer Cantillo. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as the former owner or running of the uh, St. Dominic Food Bank, we didn't get funding from the town till the very end. We struggled. The town was not there to help us. But we did it for 19 years. And I see where Councilman Elke's coming from, but I also see that we need to help these groups, but yet, what happens if we go away? What are they going to do? We didn't have any help. And thank goodness we had some donors that at Christmas time would help us get over to the hump to take care of some of these things. Other than that, a lot of the food and the rent and everything was paid by myself. So we didn't have help from the town. So that's just my viewpoint. Thank you. Um, just, uh, I believe the numbers are pretty accurate. We have made considerable reductions in these from, I think, 425,000 a couple of years ago um, for all four of those uh, contracts to about 285,000 um, this last year. So it's been considerable and it's had to be because of uh, the budget constraints we've had in reducing our budget from you know, 17, 18 million down to 12, 13 million in total. And But the numbers are not um, a large percentage of our budget as well. And as uh, many have pointed out, they're important services, um, but it's also not totally funded by the town. It's, it's partially funded by the town. Um, all these are only partially, partially funded by the town and they rely on largely individuals to support them and businesses to support them as well. So that needs to continue because they're not reliant, they cannot be reliant on uh, the government of Fountain Hills here. Any other discussion on this item? We've got a motion on uh, ha to have staff move forward as we see them in our, in our packets tonight. Okay. Um, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. That, um, the idea of um, saying that the uh, tourism contract is not on a par with the others, um, I guess if I was looking at what is the purpose of the tourism contract, um, you know, activity, getting people exposed to the town. Um, you know, I see golf, marketing, so um, not to talk about anything in particular, but is br bringing people in here to play golf different than bringing people in here for something else, another kind of amenity? So maybe the, um, what your goal is with the contract for tourism could be on a par with what a goal is on for some of these others. I'm not sure about the separation aspect of it, but you know, I've spoken and you know that I, I understand and we all have at our retreats about this uh, kind of overriding philosophical discussion and, um, and it's hard to have. I mean, we, we added money to, for Posse and for um, some of the fire district stuff and um, our fire department stuff and um, almost every event we have can be kind of looked in that same way. You know, did we spend money? Did we give somebody less rent to use something because they're a community organization? So it really is a huge discussion, and I do appreciate where you're coming from. Okay, anyone else? Mayor. Mayor. No, I'll defer to Councilor Brown. Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this, this discussion goes on year after year after year, and, and it will probably continue well after we're all off the council. Uh, you, you have to look at, you, you take tourism out of the stand and you look at the Boys and Girls Club and you look at the theater and uh, the food bank and you start looking at the children in this town, which we have almost nothing for the children in this town to do as it is. 
and taking that little bit of money away from especially the the group of people that need to keep their children in boys and girls club and and not being able to afford to put them there or you take 20 percent of the of the alarming number of total of, of the age group of zero to 20 that we fed that we fed 2970 children up to the age of 20 that's just through the month of march take 20 percent of that out that's almost 600 kids so i mean you you, you have to look at it more a little deeper than just the dollar added to the town hall. I, I see a, a group of children that are in need. I see a group of children that we can help, and I feel like we should. And I, I clearly agree with Councilman Elke. This is a tough situation. Do we do we have to? No. Do we need to? Yes. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to stand as I did what, three weeks ago or three meetings ago and, and hope that we don't uh, lower the percentage any more on these on these four contracts. Thank you. Uh, oh, 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 please. 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 Councilman Brown has mentioned, you know, we could have this discussion on and on and on. We will, and we'll vote, and we'll do what we feel is, is in the best interest of the town. But I think it's important to know that when we look at these numbers, um, I know it's very popular to talk about subsidies and government subsidizing programs. Um, for example, the, the food bank budget for next year is $260,000, um, and we are providing them with $30,000 worth of help and support. Um, they do fundraise. Um, they do do a lot of things. Um, their funding comes from churches, foundations, clubs, grants, and individual fundraising. So it's not that they're just kind of kicking back like it's social welfare and saying, okay, fine, the town's going to keep us in business. That's absolutely not the case. As a matter of fact, I think we've communicated to the food bank very clearly that there may be a day where the funding's not there and they've picked up their fundraising in the last year. So I think that organizations are in fact getting 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 that message across. So this represents a very small part of, of most of these budgets out there with perhaps one exception. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Well as long as the funding is there they're gonna obviously they're gonna continue to, to accept it and Along the, you know, to address a couple of the points that Councilmember Brown made, you know, and I want to clarify my position. Certainly not against children. Certainly don't want to see anybody go to bed hungry at night or kids not have something to do after school. This is more of a philosophical decision as far as what is government's role in all this. If, if that's what we want to be and that's what we want to do, then there should be a motion to increase these by 20% uh, and, and provide more uh, taxpayer funds for these particular types of programs, not reduce them or maintain the status quo. Um, you know, I, I, a little disappointed uh, because I think we have, have had these discussions in the past as far as getting away from funding these community service contracts and the way that the motion's written now, it, it, or the motion that's presented, it does include uh, the Chamber of Commerce uh, along with two of the other programs and my sense up here, I'm sure, Everybody else at home and out here in the crowd is that uh, it's probably going to pass. And uh, um, I, guess, I guess the question is not this year, when? The next year, the year after? Just go on to the next council, I guess, is, is a question. It's very unpopular, obviously. And I expect there are probably to be a number of emails before I get back to my office. But, <laughs> and, uh, but um, you know, I just put it out there for discussion. All right, ma'am. Thank you, Mayor. And I want to support Kate a little bit on this because I, I think it is really difficult. What happens, happens with me anyway when I talk about these things is I start to look at everything that we do. We start to look at Parks and Rec. We start to look at the fountain being on. And, you know, I know we've heard the phrase nice to have versus need to have, and there definitely aren't that many needs, needs to have. So I'm having a problem separating this from the other things that we do. And, and my conversation is, uh, if these are things that we like 
or we would like to have offered, and is this a good way to offer it? So the only difference being that maybe something isn't done through parking rights, but it's done through a contract or, um, or so if it helps that I'm just trying to give you where my mind has been going with this because I absolutely understand. All right, any other discussions before we vote on the motion, the amended motion? All right, so the amended motion is the three items of this short uh, as they are presented in the packet uh, to move for staff to move forward and crafting the contract further and working with the partners and then ultimately bringing it back to council for full approval. Um, so short of the community theater, um, this amended motion will cover those three uh, services. All in favor, Nikki, in the roll call. Roll call. Roll call, please. Thanks. Councilmember Cantino? Aye. Vice Mayor Dickey? Aye. Councilmember Brown? Aye. Mayor Slum? Aye. Councilmember Lachey? Aye. Councilmember Elton? Aye. Mayor 5 1. All right, thank you. Um, now, Andrew, as far as this, we just speak on this as if it was the, uh, the same item, just we'll be voting on it. Um, or do we need a motion on this item? I don't need a motion on this one. So. All right. Um, do we have a motion? Can we get a motion on the, um, you're going to recuse yourself? Okay. Vice Mayor is recusing herself from this item. Um, can we get a motion on the community theater item? So moved. All right. Which would be, Andrew, do we need to word it in any particular way? Is it the same as we did before? Okay. okay. Um, make, uh, move to approve the proposed scope of work for each contractor and direct staff to prepare professional service agreements at the funding levels for, uh, proposed by the Executive Budget Committee. Andrew? Um, probably should narrow that specifically to and the theater. Just to the community. Just the community theater. Sorry. Thank you for the motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion on this item? And we already heard from public. Um, I don't think Ms. Bordeaux had anything related to this one. Um, all right. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Mayor, 4 1. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Again. Thanks, partners, for working with the town and working on your scope of work and doing as much as you can for the limited dollars we have. All right, item five, discussion with possible direction to staff relating to letters dated May 7th, April 18th, and April 25th, respectively, which were received from the Fountain Hill Sanitary District regarding the notice of reclaimed water shortage and the Fountain Lake pumpback system. Mayor Slum, members of the council. Um, just more of an, uh, an information item and just the status. Um, as you know, we received uh, a notice that there's a potential shortage of um, coming from for reclaimed water. Um, the sanitary district is working diligently to to look at uh, alternative ways to help provide the water to the contracts that uh, we provide with the golf courses and with the town. With that, uh, as of that eight, April 18th um, letter that was uh, submitted to the town from the sanitary district, there was a number of questions. We've been working with the sanitary district manager to uh, answer those questions. I've been in contact with DEQ, with a number of uh, individuals there to, to determine what we actually are going to need to do to answer help answer some of those questions. We're still in the process of doing that. We'll continue to meet um, to discuss with the council as, as we know more information about that and continue to work with the sanitary district on their options. All right, good. Any questions from council? Council member uh, Brown. Do we have any projected uh, gallons, how short, how short are we going to be? I'm not really sure what that answer is, and I'm not sure what we really know what it is today with that. Um, we'll try to get that, uh, an estimated answer to you for the next update in status. Oh, the, we, excellent. That would be great, Bruce, if you could. All right. Chairman Hanson, how are you? What say you to our your customers out there? The We're projecting will be a million gallons a day short. However, we do have things in the works that we think we're going to be able to take care of this situation, and hopefully they're all going to work. But we're 90% sure now we're going to do it. But well, we get about 2 million gallons into the plant a day, and we need, have needs for about 3 million gallons. These are rough figures. So we'll be about a million gallons uh, short. 
We're in the process now of trying to lease some type 2 water credits, and this looks like it's 95% going to happen. And if we lease these type 2 water credits, we'll be able to take care of the situation at least for this year. So, but about a million gallons a day is what we're short. All right. Uh, from Brown. And, and for the duration until the snowbirds come back and well <clears throat> the, the need for water falls off dramatically in November it go, goes way down and that's that's where our, our big problem is we're going to be out of water when I say we're out of water we've stored water in the aquifer that's the water we're going to be out of we should run out of that about July and that's when we've, we're going to need this other other water which we feel that we're going to be able to get, like I say, through these type 2 water credits that we're going to be able to lease. And it looks very, very good that we're going to be able to take care of this, this situation. For 90 days or so? Well, we'll lease the type 2 water credits for the rest of the year, and we'll use what what we have to, about four, about 400 acre feet. And uh, that should take care of it. Now, we may have to do this again next year. Uh, but it won't change a, a lot of – it will go go along just like it is now. The golf courses and everybody will get the water they have just like they're getting it now. You won't see any difference providing this does go through. And again, we're, unless something completely unforeseen happens, we'll be, we're going to be all right. So hopefully this is going to work. Advise everybody drink more beer. No, flush your toilet a couple more times every day. <laughs> and just to clarify, we're talking about water. This is the reclaimed water that's spread largely on the parks and the golf courses, correct? Three golf courses are watered with reclaimed water and three of the town parks. Fountain Park, Desert Vista Park, and Golden Eagle Park are all watered with uh, reclaimed water. And the three golf courses uh, are watered uh, with reclaimed water. So the drinking water, we're not talking about being short drinking water. <laughs> this has nothing to do with drinking. Nothing to do with drinking. The other end. <laughs> so thank you. Vice Mayor. That's actually a question, Mayor. Thank you. What's the relationship between the um, sanitary district and the water company? Did, did they, who, who provides water to who with that? I, I Neither one of us provide water to, to anybody. The relationship, we, the water company provides you the water you drink, we take care of the water you flush. So really, the, the Chaparral Water Company has been very cooperative in this, in this problem. But they have problems too, which I totally understand. It's difficult for them. Uh, the only water they can provide to us is drinking water, and the price of drinking water to water a golf course is pretty high. Or the price of drinking water, well, you guys water one of your parks with, with drinking water right now. You water four peaks parts with drinking water. And you pay a sizable amount of money to do this. We charge a dollar seventeen cents per thousand gallons for uh, reclaimed water, and if you buy drinking water, it's two dollars and ninety six cents a thousand gallons. So, so that's the difference. What? Um, so the the little part of the staff summary that says CC, the, the water company is not going to reapply to the ACC for reduced rate. What is what does that mean? Well, our Water Company used to have years ago had an irrigation rate where they could provide water for golf courses at a reduced rate. That irrigation rate went away several years ago when uh, ADEQ wanted the golf courses to use reclaimed water in order to save potable water. So they said you can't have an uh, irrigation rate anymore. Now there was talk about, well, would you go and apply for that irrigation rate again? Chaparral Water does not, does not want to do this. And I understand why. I mean, so... But we don't, I don't think we're going to need that now. Yeah, and I doubt that they would be granted that in any way. I don't think the Corporation Commission would grant them an irrigation rate. I was, um, Mayor, I was thinking it was a reduced rate for effluent. So that's what I was saying. It's actually a reduced rate to irrigate with potable, but they're not doing that. They're no. They're not going to apply for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We're not going to, we're not going to do that. We think this is going to work. Any other questions? Uh, Yes, uh, I did a little bit of calculation on what we've lost in the last seven years. It comes up to pretty close to 76 million gallons that we did not put back in because of this pump. And the only thing I got to say is we've been playing around with this for such a long time 
all we'd have to do is make a call to Carol at the uh, Fort McDowell, and they would have our pump fixed within a couple of days. We've actually been in contact and working with Fort McDowell representatives on this. They're aware of it. Um, but again, we've got, we've got the legal concerns that um, the sanitary district rose, so we're trying to address those at this time. Okay. I think we've just been playing around. I think I like to see it get done and get over with. Yeah, me too. Yes, Councilman Jose. Oh, sorry. Just, just curious, seeing you're, you're providing us this information. It's like uh, Sanitary District 101A for, for me hearing this information. I'm just curious, where, where is the source or what is the source for this additional effluent that you would be getting your hands on? Okay, it's not additional effluent. The aquifer that is below us right now, it has a lot of water in it. And we're going to actually pump water out of that aquifer. We're allowed to pump, when we put water into the aquifer, which we do all the time when we have excess water, we measure it, we've got, say, 200 million gallons. At one time, we had over 300 million gallons down there. We're only allowed to pull out what we've put in. Like we're not allowed to pull out anymore. By leasing these Type 2 water credits, that allows us to pull water out of the aquifer that we didn't put in the, in the aquifer. The water's there right now. Sure. And we're just... We're just going through what it takes to be allowed to take that out. Uh, somebody has some extra water on the west side of the valley. We buy it so we can now pump it out of the aquifer. Yeah, that's what it is. My question, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Mayor, Mayor Schlum, um members of the council, um, Mr. Hanson, that's actually an agriculture type 2 that you're looking at. Type 2, type two water credits are non-agriculture. Non-agriculture. Non-agriculture yeah. water credits. Right. All right, thank you, Chair. Um, let's see here. Any direction the staff you're looking for? That's more of an update, right, Ken? Uh, Not really looking for direction from us. All right, on to next item six, discussion with possible direction related to any items included in the League of Cities and Towns Weekly Legislative Bulletin. Ken? Mr. Schwann, members of the council, only to um, I guess forward some further news that we all know about, and that's uh, Senate Bill 2826. What I'd like to do is maybe um, ask the town clerk to uh, uh, elaborate a little bit, and maybe with the town attorney can assist a little bit of what we're going to have to do to comply with uh, Senate Bill 2826, the consolidation of, of our you know, elections consolidation bill that the governor signed last week. Thank you. Hey, Evelyn, how are you? Yeah, council. Um, once that legislation has been pre-cleared, this is something that's going to have to go to the Department of Justice because it affects voters' rights. Once that comes back, we'll be working closely with the town attorney to make sure that we come into compliance with the far next election in 2014. It's going to include probably changes to the town code that will have to come before the council for approval and a few other areas as well, such as terms, vice like mayor terms, council members, mayor terms. So we'll bring all that back. Timing. Correct. For, uh, um, I forgot to ask, was anybody on the public on this item? No, okay. no public. All right, anything else, Beth? You no, know, that's just a very high overview of things that are to come. Yeah. All right, and anything further? No, sir. Any counsel on any of the other item updates? No. All right, moving on to, okay. I'm just saying, <laughs> self <-form predictive laughs> About answer. that bill, because we did have some people that were, um, concerned with our involvement and we did um, join with the, uh, as the Capitol Times said, the flood of letters from cities and towns opposing the bill and in fact there were 27 county officials in more than 40 cities who um, asked the governor to um, veto the bill. Um, you, we had a, a, the, the letter from the governor in our packet stating that uh, yes, that 2826 presents all local laws and ordinances and charter provisions if they're contrary to the consolidated election schedule. And like I've just said, beginning in 2014, we will have be subject to, um, to these new consolidated election schedule, which appears to look like the folks that were just elected and then those who are staying on here have another six months, um, uh, another six months to their terms. Um, she said she agreed with the legislature's statement um, that the, and the sponsor's intent to consolidate these elections in an effort to increase voter participation and reduce costs 
And as you know, we did that locally here by going to the all mail in ballot, which did both of those things, reduce uh, cost and uh, increase uh, the intent was to increase voter uh, participation. Uh, I wanted to uh, read something from the Capitol Times from the bill sponsor, Michelle Eugenti, representative, who said that not only will it reduce loss, reduce costs, and increase voter turnout, but it, but it will diminish the clout that special interests, namely special labor unions, have on municipal elections. Supporters such as the Goldwater Institute, which lobbied for the bill, have long accused unions of using low voter in city elections to help pro-union candidates. She uh, says, quote, this truly is your anti-union bill because now special interests can't take advantage of low voter turnout, and that was used as a tool. Um, the bill may result in more conservative candidates being elected at the municipal level, but denied that that was the intent of the bill. It may lend itself to, uh, quote, it may lend itself to more conservative candidates, but the goal was always to promote the voter's voice, and that was the goal. And the lead, and along with dozens of cities and, and county officials, including Fountain Hill, sent letters to the governor uh, saying that the bill would increase election costs for some smaller cities, it would diminish local control, and drown out municipal issues in elections where voters would be more focused on state level and federal um, and federal races. And uh, Ken Stilbeck, who is the head of the league, said that they don't believe that this was a good policy for the 76 cities and towns across the state that are affected by the change in this law. When you have a municipal election in a small town that is trailing all of the federal, state, legislative, school district issues, and you get to the tail end of the ballot, I don't think there's any way that you can claim that municipal candidates will be getting greater scrutiny and attention. So again, uh, I think we're disheartened with the decision, and uh, there's also possible legal ramifications uh, given the court decision about Tucson recently. So it was a disappointment. We'll obviously go on, but I wanted to be on the record for the folks who had approached us about to asking us to oppose this to let you know that we did, and those were the reasons. And we've also had the opportunity to talk about it amongst ourselves. Do we want to do the all mail? Do we want to change our election dates? And we've always liked the spring election in particular because it was our focus of our town. It wasn't caught up in all the other things. So it's certainly not what we've always, what we've liked and what we desired. I'm sure there'll be some benefits and there'll be some drawbacks, but um, it is what it is now. And we'll see, we'll see how it works out. I'm not sure. Um, how the um, all-mail ballot will be affected, and I'm not sure, Bev, you do yet either, because that was one of the reasons we went forward on the all-mail was to get more voters their ballots, to encourage them to return them, and that that has occurred, but um, not nearly to the numbers we wanted to see. But it seemed like one of the reasons we um, that we couldn't do a mail ballot is when there are other issues from other jurisdictions on that same state's ballot. Is that going to change? Does it just seem like if, if there aren't all mail ballots um, for all jurisdictions, um, they wouldn't just do an all mail ballot for Fountain Hills with all the items on it, would they? We're still working a detailed ballot with the town. Okay. So we'll have to wait and see. And again, it is what it is, but it is what it is. one of the reasons we didn't do we didn't. We weren't in favor of that either. All right, good. Thanks for the dialogue. Anything else on the three cities update? All right. Thank you. Um, on to, uh, what are we on, guys? Well, let's take this one slow. I think we're on our last motion for a regular session here. Other than um, I think mean, council discussion director, our town manager, I don't think anything there. Um, here. Uh, council member Lizzie. Uh, just personal privilege, please. All right. Um, I just realized this is your last meeting. It is. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Well, it is what it is. <laughs> now, I've had a long time to think about it, and here we are. Okay. Very good. I know we're not adding another meeting, if that's what you're worried about. No, I'm not suggesting. No. We just may not adjourn. Uh, no. just, just getting there. I, I know you'll be here for another meeting, and we'll be doing the, the, the passing of the gavel, but I'm not sure anyone will have an opportunity to speak at that point in time in terms of how that, that process rolls. So, I just want to say it's been a pleasure serving with you, and um, I think you've you've done well. Um, you've done a tremendous job during one of the you know worst uh, downturns in the economy. You've you've served with dignity. You've served with integrity. Um, you've treated just anyone and everyone that's come across this 
podium with, with respect uh, um, not only in your official duties but in the town of Fountain Hills. So I just want to commend you for, for all of that and recognize you for just doing an outstanding job as the mayor of Fountain Hills. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you. Thank you. No surprise. I think that most of you know me. It's a complete honor and a joy to be mayor of Fountain Hills. It just is just awesome. So it's my pleasure. And Council Member Campino will be, this is our, both of our last uh, regularly scheduled me regular town council meetings and we'll each have an opportunity to share a couple words at the, at the gavel passing ceremony. So uh, I'll definitely share some things then at that point. So stand by. I'm going to add your seat. And, uh, but it's been great. And you guys are awesome. So that's why I have a little hesitation in moving on. We've got a great council and of course we've always been blessed with a tremendous staff. So, and council and uh, the citizenry and the businesses here and go on and on. But we're in great shape here in Fountain Hills. We got through a bunch of hard work. So, um, thank goodness. All right. Look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor, and keep it saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you.